in occupied Tibet were now revived. During a two-day annual festival, the monks share with the entire lay community their inner spiritual experiences through these sacred dances. These symbolic movements are said to have the power to liberate the mind from disturbing emotions. Every year, Kinsi Rinpoche, Rabjam Rinpoche, and his disciples would gather in India under the tree where the Buddha received enlightenment and offer prayers for world peace. Those with compassion are kind even when angry. Those without compassion kill even as they smile. By offering thousands of devotions a day, these monks pray to take upon themselves the sufferings of all beings and to send them happiness in return. All over the Himalayas, prayers are carried by the wind that blows over flags and by water turning prayer wheels. <laughs> <laughs> Prayers are also carved in rock. As long as space endures, and as long as beings exist, may I too remain to dispel the misery of the world. In 1985, after sealing the borders for decades, the Chinese allowed a few Tibetans to briefly visit their homeland. Among them was Kensi Rinpoche. For Tibet, the return of this great master after 30 years of exile was like a bright sunrise after a long night of darkness. <laughs> The Chinese persecution had not diminished the Tibetan people's strength of mind nor their love for their Buddhist traditions. The news of his arrival spread like wildfire. Crowds gathered to see his face and request his blessings. Despite his old age, Kensi Rinpoche visited every monastery that invited him. A few hours from Lhasa, he crossed the Sangpo River to Samye, Tibet's first monastery, built in the 9th century. Beholding the Chinese destruction of the beloved monastery, he vowed to restore it to its former splendor.
Five years later, he returned to Tibet to reconsecrate a fully restored Samye monastery. Wherever Kensei Rinpoche went, the entire village would be waiting to see him and listen to his advice. After several days on the long road to eastern Tibet, 300 horsemen, wearing white hats as a sign of welcome, rode out to escort Kensi Rinpoche to his monastery. A traditional procession had formed to greet him at Derge and show him the only printing press in Tibet that was not destroyed during the Chinese Cultural Revolution. <laughs> Tibetans venerate books of scriptures that embody the Buddhist speech and contain the instructions through which enlightenment can be reached. The press is therefore no less sacred than the temple. The 200,000 hand-carved woodblocks of scriptures stored at the press are once again being used to print copies of the texts. quiet moment with an old friend who had not been able to escape the Chinese occupation. Special celebrations welcome the great master. It is here at session that Kensi Rinpoche met his own teacher and received his first essential instructions. He greets a former attendant who had prayed for years not to die before seeing the great master again. The years of horrendous suffering have not diminished the Tibetan people's capacity for joy. For hours, people would file by Kensei Rinpoche and Rabjam Rinpoche, now the abbot of the monastery. Many had walked for days through the mountains to receive their blessings. Precious relics and other sacred objects hidden from the Chinese at great risk are brought out for the first time. A 
Apart from the joy of seeing his homeland and lost friends again, Kensi Rinpoche had another mission to accomplish. It was to give teachings and initiations to other lamas and students, all of whom had been denied their spiritual heritage for so many years. The wide open expanse of spiritual realization, the true condition of mind, is like the sky, like space, without center, without edge, without goal, dissolving into the expanse of emptiness that has no limits and no boundary. Everything I see, everything I hear, my own mind and the sky all merge. When you see a lofty mountain, be reminded of the inner view. The view is the teacher's mind, inseparable from the nature of your own. <laughs> 